Santos. Santos su debut profesional. Antoine Hardy queriendo hacer la pelea. Muy marrullera, hay que decirlo. Sí, y estaba poniendo indicaciones, no solamente de su esquina, sino de imagino, sus amigos presentes que hoy lo vinieron a apoyar en su debut profesional. Y también pecando al dejar que eh, Hardy permite muchos golpes largos, muchos miedos. Consiguiendo el castigo al estilo Joseph King Kang el Pepe, quizá King Chevaz cobrándose la de antes mal en la semana pasada. Impresionante, ¿eh? se dice que entonces se pide una pelea de revancha. Una federación que la ciudad de boxeo ya exigiendo que de inmediato sea el próximo combate y se cae. El tercer hombre fue el tinglado de Javi Dunn. El público. For all times, fight hard, fight clean. Bye. Tonight is a night about tests. I didn't see you. He has taken the test and failed against Klitschko, but that was in 2009. Stavern has yet to be tested on a setting like this. Whoever passes the test tonight may get another shot at a heavyweight championship. Twelve rounds in the heavyweight division. Don't go to the fridge. This one might end early. Well, this fight's been delayed numerous times because of injuries and illnesses. Stavern's camp says it was Areola just trying to get down and wait. Well, now they get to settle it in a small ring. Andre, we walked this off before the fights began. And inside the ropes, it's only about 18 feet by 18 feet inside the ropes. So for heavyweights, it makes for tight quarters. Yeah, I think it was all by design. These guys, it's no secret, neither one of them are going to do a lot of boxing. They want a knockout here tonight in Ontario. I think they're going to get it. Ariel has been in with Vitaly Klitschko. He lost to him in 2009. Lost to Tomas Adamek. In the majority decision in 2010, he's been in against guys like Jamil McFine and Chaz Witherspoon. Stavern's biggest name in his resume is 40-year-old Ray Austin. Stavern looks a little tight right now. Ariola's putting steady pressure like he said he was. It's not a good time for Stavern to get caught. He looks a little cold, no sweat on him. Vern was born in Haiti, the 11th of 14 children. As Ariola tries a body shot, Stavern fights off the ropes. Age of nine, his family moved to Miami, was involved in some fights in junior high. His mom was concerned about gangs, so they had family in Montreal. Stavern fought out of Montreal, now fighting out of Miami again. Actually, started his athletic career as a football player, was recruited by Nick Saban at Michigan State, but suffered an injury, never got to participate at Michigan State, and was selling cell phones and doing telemarketing, and his weight got out of shape, ballooned up, and went to a boxing gym, and he got a late start. Turned pro in 2005, he's 34 years of age. Ariel, on the other hand, has been boxing since he was a kid. Slides a left hand in, tries that overhand right. Stavern playing defense right now. Good combination to the body by Stavern. Stavern is giving just as much as he's taking right now. This is the kind of fight both men said it would be. And neither fighter was lying. here in the first round for heavyweights Chris Ariel end of round one. Okay, 
Trying to do is let you get off and trying to come back to the counter after you get off. Okay, bring those hands back, let you move in behind the jab, slide right your feet. Okay? So, Mr. Dunn, just try to ready. Good friend. Good friend. Stop putting three and four together, okay? Three and four together. It goes real high, but go right with the guard. Punch through the guard, okay? You get it? You got 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 it? Here we go. You need some ice. Number two, Chris. Water, water, water. Water, water, water. Let's go. Let's go. Number two. Bourbon, number two. Bell South to begin round number two. I don't know if you've tuned into HBO expecting to see Sergio Martinez and Mark Murray from Argentina. Rain conditions in Buenos Aires in that outdoor venue. That fight has already taken place. But don't worry, after Ariola and Stavern, we will bring you that fight in its entirety. Ariola seems real patient. I'd like to see him pick up his jab a little bit more and work his way in. Esther Byrne is dangerous, and he's very sneaky with that overhand right. Ariola likes to brawl. Stavern trying to pick his shots out of that corner. Andre, their styles are similar. If you're fighting a guy that stylistically is similar to you, what do you do to try to change the dynamic? I don't think you have to do anything drastic. I think whatever you do, you got to do it better than your opponent. And that's what it boils down to. And right now, Ariola has a slight edge in this fight in the first round and a half. Mr. Vern is not intimidated. He seems to be loosening up and warming up a little bit. Would have liked to see Chris come in. Good right hand from Stavern. A little bit lighter in this fight. Both of his losses came in the 250 range, and he's four pounds off of that in this fight. I think he's in better condition in the, in the mid-230s, and his punches are crisper. Let's see how he turns out tonight. Are you surprised that Stavern came in at 247 when they told us that he likes to be around 240? Well, they did say he put on some extra mass with some weightlifting. Good work from Chris. More concerned with Chris Ariola because they assured us that he would be 235, 236. And some would say, what's the big deal? What's well, a big deal with a fighter like Chris Ariola, who doesn't have a boatload of height? He needs to be in that 230 range to be most effective. I think Chris, when he's a little bit heavier, he tends to wait a little bit more, and again, he doesn't have as much snap on his punches. Final seconds of round number two. Stavern a bit busier in this round. Stay off the ropes. Make sure you join us May 25th, live at 6, 15 p.m. It's Carl Fock versus Miguel Kessler from London, England. You'll see it again at 10 p.m. Followed by live action from Montreal as Lushan Boutte squares off against Jean Pascal. All right? Just keep that jab in your face. You got a good jab. Okay. You gotta be active on your way in, okay? You just can't barrel in, okay? Move your head, listen. You gotta you let him be a little more active. Don't let him get comfortable, okay? Once you get him on the roof, fucking bang him downstairs. For Ariola's wife and daughter, Danny and Aaron, looking on anxiously. Hold up, hold up, Chris Ariola. The nightmare against Berman Stavern. Beware, Berman Stavern. Begin round number three. In the last round, Ariola landed 12 of his 44 power shots, according to CompuBox. Stavern, 4 of 15. 
Henry Ramirez told Ariola what we spoke about in the last round about coming behind his jab just like that to get inside and hide those big shots from Stavern. Here we see Stavern picking up his jab. Through two rounds, they've kind of felt each other out a little bit. What does, in your opinion, Ariola need to do to sort of get the upper hand here? Well, I'm still trying to figure out what type of game plan Chris has. I mean, we're going into the third round, still relatively early. But he said from the jump he wanted to assert his dominance, and he's not quite doing that right now, though I believe he's slightly up on the scorecard, if it's not even. The Stavern camp feels like they've polished the diamond. And uh, they need to be first. Are they doing enough of that? Well, again, I'm a little unsure about the game plan of Stavarin because I don't know if he's going to box on his back foot the whole night like he's doing or if he's going to try to get some respect for Mariola. But again, it's early, and these things have a way of working themselves out as the fight progresses. That left hand was blocked by Stavarin. Stavarin digs a hook. Another right hand to the body. A nice attack there by Stavern. I think Stavern is the kind of guy who hasn't really fought at this level consistently. He's the guy you don't want to get confidence because then he believes that he's supposed to be here. Ariola being the veteran, so to speak, he needs to take control and do it now. to the nice hook to the body again. So Stavern is starting to use body shots here a little bit, Andre. It's like I just said, he's starting to believe that he's supposed to be here. Also that block by Stavern. And in this round, Ariola, according to CopyBox, has only thrown 19 punches to Stavern's 57. And Ariola goes down at the end of the round. Three, four, five, get in the ring. The corner Set. thought the round was Set. over. They came Set. in the ring. They Set. ran back Set. out. Set. Cannot be saved by the bell in any round. This Ariola's hurt. He's hurt. Steve Weisfeld. I want you out of the ring. You don't understand boxing, and I want you out of the ring when the 10 second warning. And Jack Reese just told the corner of Berman Stavern, Don House, that could have disqualified you. Steve Weisfeld, who longtime judge, who's joining the HBO family as a analysis we're going to take a look at the replay first of the knockdown and then we'll bring in steve and let's take a look at the right hand at the end of the round from stavern as we said he'd been boxing all night chris got lazy as he threw his jab out of stavern landed with a tremendous right hand and down with chris Ariola. but we will replay it for you in its entirety after this heavyweight showdown here on hbo's world championship boxing Chris is still pushing forward. His heart is still in it. But if that nose is, in fact, broke, he doesn't want to open up and get hit on that nose. And that's why I think he's so economical with his punches right now. You know, it's interesting when we sat down with Stavern for our fighters meeting. You know, we chatted with him for a little bit. Overhand right from Stavern. He blocked the Ariola counter back. After a couple minutes, Stavern looked over at me and he said, well, I want to shut you up <laughs> after some of the things that I had said in his fight against Ray Austin that he won in 2011. But his trainer, Don House, immediately chimed in and said, yes, but justified criticism. They feel like they've gone back to school. They say they've polished the diamond. And to this point, Andre, we're seeing that from Skivarn. He looks much better. Yeah, sometimes as a fighter, you need to hear an announcer be honest and tell you what you're lacking and what you're missing. That's what makes you go back to the gym, makes you go back to school and get better.
Chris is busting up a little bit here, but he's never lacking in heart. Chris is going to give it everything he has until it's over. Another busy round. Stavern threw 65 punches, 66 punches in this round. The heavyweight average is 46 strong. There's Berman's brother, John Stavern, who played college football at the University of Miami. That's why he still hey, he down. Listen, he can't do shit going back. He's tired, but when you don't do shit, you just sit, give him space. Five. Five. Recuperate. We're doing fine. Come on, man. He don't have what you got. back off the ropes. He don't have what you got. These guys ready to go. All right, ready to go. Get up. Let's go. Let's go. Now, Henry, come on. Let's go. Five. Round number six begins for Chris Ariola and Berman Stavern. Stavern in the black dropped Ariola with a right hand near the end of round number three, busted up his nose. The Stavern quarter, while referee Jack Reese was giving the count, had stepped into the ring, threw in the stool, and then Don House hustled out. Jack Reese used discretion, didn't disqualify Stavern. Good call by referee Jack Reese, who celebrates his 57th birthday today in the ring. But that nose is really giving Ariola some problems. He's starting to puff up around the eyes, and he doesn't seem willing to take a risk against Stavern at the moment. Steps in with a couple of right hands. Going in Stavern. Big shot from Mariota. Stavern seemed to handle it well, though, Andre. And that's what Stavern's going to have to do if he's going to weather these storms. He's got to let Mariota know it's not going to happen right there tonight. Thumps a right hand to the body. Ariola doesn't sort of follow up. That one blocked by the shoulder of Stavern. But the jab has been a difference for Stavern. It's not a heavy jab, but it's enough to keep Ariola honest. He's thrown 208 jabs at Stavern so far in the fight. The jab is a loss. a mess. Those body shots just taking his will away. Another left took to the body by Stavern. He hurt him with that one. It was a test for Stavern and a test for Ariola. And it looks like Stavern has aced it. Chris Ariola got dropped at the end of round three. He fought through the blood, the cut left eye, and at the end of round number three, this fight really turned around. That shot dropped Ariola. And the blood started pouring out of the nose, and then in round number four, Berman Stavern kept up that pace. Using his jab, shots to the body, and the right hand, snapping back the head of Ariola. In round number six, Ariola had a moment of his own. Although Stavern had done good work to this point, Ariola snaps back the head of Stavern with a left and a couple of right hands. 
But then in the later rounds, Stavern again got it working. He used the shots to the body, and then that left and right, right on the chin of Ariola seemed to hurt his left arm. And then the 12th round, Ariola came out fast in the 12th round, but Stavern used thunderous shots to the body. He answered with solid scoring shots of his own. And the face of Chris Ariola sort of tells the story. Battered, bruised, bloody, and look at Berman Stavern. Clean as a whistle. That young man boxed tonight. You've got to take your hat off to him. Well, Steve Weisfeld has it for Berman Stavern. Steve, who are the judges that will make this official? First judge is uh, Carla Caiz. Carla comes from a boxing family. She has two brothers who are boxing officials. Her dad has been a referee and a judge for years. This is one of her bigger bouts. I understand she's a consistent judge. She works a lot in California, and the commission has confidence in her. Martin Dankins, he refereed a world title fight in 1967. He's had a ton of experience. I've worked with him. I agreed with him on Bradley Provodnikov, and he certainly knows what he's watching. Claude Paquette, a retired police officer, um, with the major crimes unit in Montreal, I understand he's a fine judge, as you can see. He had the first fight even with Pascal and Hopkins. I thought Hopkins won that fight. All right, now let's see how the judges had it scored as we send it up to our ring announcer, Barry Eagle. Ontario, you have just seen one of the great heavyweight bouts you will ever see. How about a big round of applause for these two amazing warriors? We go to the scorecard. Judge Carla Caiz and Claude Paquette score the bout 117-110. Judge Marty Denkin scores the bout 118 to 109 for the winner. By unanimous that, uh, We finally got our man. NC Joshua has turned professional and signed a long-term deal with Matrim Boxing and will debut officially on October the 5th at the O2 Arena um, in London. be successful as bad as you want to breathe then you'll be successful I'm so ambitious to get to where I want to get to and I'm so far away and for anyone who thinks that like I've hit the big time, you've got it completely wrong. It's gonna take a long time to get where I want to get to, and I'm just willing to give whatever it takes to try it. <laughs> Melbourne, 